Good morning. Welcome to worship service this morning. We want to welcome everyone who's here and those of us who are joining on several platforms. As usual this morning, because this is a long weekend and we don't happen to have uh, kids' ministry happening, we're going to start with a Skit Guys video. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to stand and join with me. We continue worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God. For in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through this sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We remain standing for our opening hymn.
You may be seated. Now, I need that next slide, please. This is why we're here today. A little later on, spoiler alert, a little later on, that's part one. Because this is a two-parter, only I'm not going to be here for the second part, but that's coming up also. Okay. If you take a look, I want you to notice closely who's at the bottom and how many people are at the bottom. Now you'll notice that that doesn't fit. Because see, if you do that count, it's not 11. If you do that count, it's not 12. I'll let you take a look at that for a minute longer. And I'll let you know that this is the other half of the equation that started this season. This goes way back to transfiguration, where we started this season of life with Jesus present. Because, you see, this is the last one. This is exit music. This is leaving. Now, you may figure that, hey, he is going to show up again, and that would be perfectly in line, because that's what the first disciples are figuring. But this one's permanent, and that's why it's important. That's why we celebrate it today, is this is permanent. This is only the third time, by the way, this is going to happen. The other two are in the Old Testament. Some fellow named Enoch. And another guy named Elijah. This is special company. You're very, very special when this happens. You don't get to be dead. But we're going to talk more about that as we're going along today. I'll ask you to stand and join with me. My dear friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God of glory, your Son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lessons. Psalm 61, 8, verses 1 to 10, th verses 32 to 35. Let God arise and let's, let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so, so you should drive them away. away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joy joyful. Sing to God. Sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O oh God, you are a father to orphans, defender of win widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom, but the rebels shall live in desert places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain, at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent the bountiful rain, O God. 
you restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. Reading from Acts 1, 6 to 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time you, when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times for, or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had this, when he had, this, had, he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight while he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, heavenly to men in white robes stood by them, They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus has been taken up from you into heaven. Well, come in in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. When they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away, when they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were saying, staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James, All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. I'll ask you to stand and join with me for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn like fire within us, speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. The Holy Gospel this day is a reading from the book of St. Luke in the 24th chapter. And then he, that is Jesus, said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am ascending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. 
And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The word of the Lord. You. you may be seated. I gave you a little bit of a spoiler alert during the children's time for a moment about what we are about here. This is part of a whole section that's the conclusion of Easter as we come to the end of the 50 days. Comes in two pieces. And so I want to start this morning with a love story. Now that may seem kind of strange until you know what it's about. It has to do with a woman named Inga Sargent who died earlier this year. That name may not be familiar to you, but this woman had been born and had lived in Austria. And after the war, and they'd gotten out of incarceration, she decided being the ripe old age of about 18, to head for the United States to further her education. She wound up in Colorado. There she met another foreign exchange student, and he was from a place called Burma. That's Myanmar these days. And he was over there studying for his master's in engineering. And the two of them got talking, being as how they were both foreigners in a strange country, and it was right after the Second World War, and they found out that they'd had a lot in common. I had the wonderful opportunity to know a man who had served many years with the RAF and who was born in Burma and had to flee as the troops were approaching he and his family, and they fled first to India and then back to Britain for the Second World War. He says, many of us have the same experiences. We wind up being strangers because we're supposed to be from one country and we're living in another or two or three. The whole experience is off. Now, what this young man didn't tell this young woman is that he kind of liked her. And he liked her a little more, and she liked him a little. And a little more, and a little more. Well, you know where that's going. They got married. And they headed back for their honeymoon to his home country. What she did not know is she wouldn't be leaving anytime soon. This honeymoon was 12 years. And the reason for that was she discovered his people. And they discovered her. Where they were is in northern Myanmar. Because he was a prince of this whole territory. And she was now the princess. They were held in high regard. He was looked to as lawgiver. He was looked to as benefactor. He was looked to as many things. And their love continued to blossom until such time as in 1962, a decade later, they were thrown out. Her husband wound up dying in prison because of the military coup that went on at that time. She subsequently left and wound up back in the U.S. in Colorado again, where she raised their children. Again, as a foreigner in a strange country who became more accustomed. This is exactly where the disciples are standing, dear friends, is we are strangers in a foreign country because we've seen all this stuff. And it just keeps coming. It never stops. Now, all of a sudden, Jesus disappears. He is lifted into heaven. We know what that means from our Hebrew scriptures. And suddenly, he's gone. And we know the power and might behind that. So now here's the problem. What's next? 
And see, here's where we're standing right now is what's next. Because in this time, in this day, in our church, in all the churches, what's next is the question. The Church of Scotland, one of my home churches, is meeting this week in Edinburgh. And they have an answer. They are closing 100 churches in the next year and a half. Because financially they cannot support it. Now what that is going to mean for them as a church, they don't know yet. What it meant for the disciples is they were going to do what they were told. They were going back to the upper room. Now the problem is, we can't go back because we've developed forward so far. I don't see us heading back to Germany, Denmark, Sweden where we come from. I don't see us heading back. We have to go forward. What that will look like has so many possibilities. The bishop put four in front of us that he sees at the moment, all of which are fascinating. I commend them to you. They're on the website, or you can ask Marla. They're at the area meetings that are going on. It is wonderful to stand in this time of not knowing. I had a moment of not knowing this morning. I thought God was truly speaking. Because I had rounded the corner. I'm coming south on the hen day. And I have a moment of not knowing because suddenly on one of the on-ramps, there's seven vehicles in a row. And they're all pulling in. Because there's space out in front of me. What the last two don't know is that I'm there, it seems. And now I have a moment of unknowing. Because I'm going, okay, Lord, do I break? Do I stop? Or are they going to hit me? And the problem is, the smoke is that thick right there. This is a moment of unknowing. I got through it. Cars in one piece. They got through it. Their vehicles are in one piece. But this happens time and again in our lives is where we hit the moment of unknowing. And God says the same thing at all these points. I'm going to deliver. I'm right here with you. I'm right beside you. Wait for it. Toughest answer in the world. Wait for it. Because you see, by the time we get to next Sunday, God has answers. Oh, God has answers nobody ever saw coming. That's the day of Pentecost, and I won't get ahead of myself. Because other things are going to happen next week. I'll, I'll come to that in the announcements. It is wonderful, my friends, to stand at the moment of unknowing because that's truly where we got to go to God, we got to go to Jesus, we got to go to the Holy Spirit and stand there and say, Lord, I need help and direction. So hand it out and do it now. And God says, Certainly, I'm right here. And we'll get those directions, we'll see what's happening. And in the meantime, we carry on with the mission which is to go and spread the word into the whole world to the glory of the kingdom. Amen. I'll ask you to stand and join with me as we come to the hymn of the day.
and joy of the resurrection. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of harmony, as you drew your son to your side, you draw us to you and unite us with the planet and one another. Weave your church together in a web of mutual love for the sake of the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As your spirit hovered over the waters of creation, so your spirit hovers over all you have made. Bless the water that sustains, uh, sustains the planet and grant wisdom to use it wisely. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You empower your people with the fire of your spirit. Challenge activists and organizers, teachers and politicians, and all in leadership to speak a message of peace and justice. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is Thanks great. Lord. You care for all your children. Show us your steadfast love to those suffering isolation, especially exiles, refugees, or prisoners. Break the chains of all held fast by systemic oppression of any kind. Comfort all who are afraid and those who are suffering from all illnesses, especially those whom we name from our hearts, and also Sandy, Howie, Sharon, Tammy and Tiffany, Henry and Violet, Eric, Rose, Phil, Ken, Kelsey, Chris and Riley, Diane, Sarah, Wesley, Leslie, Laverne, Nikki, Bob, Vanessa, Sharon, Tabitha, Viola, Tommy, Rebecca, Pam, Sam, and also Nancy. Extend your renewing and restoring hand to all whom we hold before you. Hear us, O oh God. Yes. We give thanks that humankind serves as your body in the world. Stewarding your abundant gifts, guide this congregation's leaders as they seek your will. We pray for our staff and council. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You raise your saints to new life in Christ. We give you thanks for all your saints who have given us glimpses of your redeeming love. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share the peace.
before we do that, we're going to do the creed, okay? All right, now as you're gathering together again, yeah, I goofed, okay? Well, we kind of skipped the creed, so we're going back for a second to do it now, okay? So we'll confess our common faith together, and then we'll come before the Lord in the sacrament. We say the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ends with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we go to the dialogue. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in his dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see, only thou art holy. And in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated for the distribution. gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, His power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me. Through the deepest valley, He will the night has been won, and I shall overcome, yet not I, but through Christ in me. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. But Jesus bled and suffered for my fault. In, and he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. Oh, the chains are released. I can sing, I am free, and not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for He has said that He will bring me home. And day by day, 
I know you will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, not I, but through Christ in me. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. I'll ask you to stand and join with me. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. And now receive the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. I have a number of announcements this morning. Uh, we'll start with birthdays as usual. Uh, Gina... Shadir and Marcus all have birthdays coming up this week and next. So we need to sing happy birthday to them. Now we have one anniversary coming up and one that we missed last week. Uh, Vernon and Donna Gertz had an anniversary on the 18th of May. It was their 38th anniversary. And Gordon and Linda Payne have one coming up on the 24th, which will be their 43rd anniversary. They're sneaking up there. By the time you get past 40, 50s in sight, and you keep going, well, where did that happen? But anyway, uh, next Sunday. No, I'm not here, but you got lots of folks coming. Uh, Camp Kyriakos is going to be here, and we welcome them, and Pastor Art coming in, and they're going to lead worship next Sunday. Now, two weeks from today, on the 4th of June, we are going to be having our next ministry kids as well as a barbecue. There will be hot dogs and hamburgers, and everybody's welcome. We would invite folks to bring salads to share, please, okay? Uh, as well on that Sunday, so this is also all happening the same day, we're going to be having a cookie bake sale, so you're warned in advance. So if you really want some more of Heidi's Great Cookies, um, 
we've already got it planned at our household. Um, make sure that you have um, some form of payment with you because otherwise you're gonna miss out and that wouldn't be really good. So now, if you missed the financial update from council this past week, there are some printed copies over there on the ushers table if you wanna take a look at those. And if you can stay for a little time after worship, we need to clear this because we're one of the advanced polling stations for the election and it will start uh, this coming Tuesday and they'll be here right through Saturday. So if you can help clear chairs and stuff, that would be greatly appreciated. Now, uh, there's a library announcement. There is. We're gonna get there. Well, I was told there was a library announcement. We're gonna get there. We have a bunch of library books in the back collecting dust. And so uh, the thought is that uh, we will be bringing them out because we have a bookcase back there that is free. And so we're gonna bring in, bringing them out and besides what Anne has got in her, her little box there, those we will ask you to bring back and sign out. But all the books that will be placed on the bookshelf at the back, the open shelf, they will all be there to take and do with what you want. You want to bring them back, that's fine. If you don't need to sign them out, if you like it and you want to keep it and share it with somebody else, that's fine. Because we just have so many books and um, it's just a good way to spread. We don't need to just keep hoarding them. And also, we're also going to, um, if you feel the need to want to share some of your gardening books and uh, cookbooks, we would appreciate it if you brought those in and um, we would um, put them out the same as before. So you won't be getting these, libra these books back unless you want it back and then we'll put it in the Anne's library there. But you are free to look through it and pick any books that you want to take for cooking that you think is going to be something of your interest or gardening something of your interest. And if you have books that you're not using, and please bring them in and we'll recycle them. So we're going to be starting that hopefully very shortly. So I'm hoping to get some people to help because we have a lot of books to carry <laughs> and sort. So I will come and think about a date or if somebody has a date you can call me and we'll see if it works because that would be perfect. Um, it's going to need a few people to get through it all. Thanks. Um, now before you go Deborah, about those cookbooks. Yep. Do you really, well we have some, she opened this. <laughs> <laughs> we have some that read a pinch of this, a dash of that, a dollop. These are the measurements, guys. A dollop, um, the size of a walnut. Do you want those too? If they're good recipes and they're familiar recipes, and people enjoy those kind of recipes too. Okay. Or maybe just read. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I thought I'd better warn you, we've got a couple <laughs> hanging around that read like that. If so. you want to part with it, sure. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Uh, now, um, library's open this morning, by the way. Um, any other announcements? If not, stand and join with me for our closing hymn. sin 
who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Messiah, Lord of all, His body the bread, His blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn, love so amazing. So amazing, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sin. Friends, go in peace. Christ is with you.